Greetings, this is Lita Zormo. Today we're going to be talking about the human and soul potential. Basically, going through this slideshow, we're going to examine the fact that we being the life thereof, and since we are the soul within the body, our potential is very vast, even as our minds might even imagine. The golden rule for us to understand what we are and our proper identity is this in that the body itself does not see itself as more than what it is, but the soul understands what it is before and what it may be after, from the current mode or form in which it is. So basically, we are able to detect that what is ahead of us as beings, not as bodies, as beings, and in our conditioned modes, there is a differentiation for us to make. But first, we'll have to start from the beginning to get a good view. The source, call it God, call it what we will, the creator, the life energy, is the core and the heart of what is. We do not necessarily have to look at it as being in the beginning, but perhaps more along the lines of what always is. This is a now presence. When we realize that we are of this, from this, and indeed are this, we are able to understand our very potentials. At the very first offset, when Soul Creator expresses itself into a multitude of individual or individuated soul spark entities. That is you, that is me. We are very much, verily, of this great exhalation. And this exhalation from the source is always taking place even as it is always inhaling itself back onto itself. We are expressed in a variety of ways and in a multidimensional reality in order to enjoy various aspects and forms of creation. This is very much the case. We are in it right now. We are out on a journey at this moment. So understanding how being works, not things. A lot of people get confused and get caught up with the idea of things. I am this thing. I am that thing. All things are of a temporary nature. The enjoyment and the enactment thereof being a thing is of a temporary nature. When we can properly educate ourselves and look with our clearest identity, our actual self-actualized clearest self-identity, we do very much come to see and come to grips with the fact that we are of the source and are, by automatic default, one with the source. And how could we not be? When we're able to disassociate the fact that we've been telling ourselves for such a time, I am this thing, I am this thing, with false education systems and a lack of inner perception. When we are only looking externally and not internally, this is where misidentification stems from. This is the root of it. When we're able to put the two into one and understand that even a multiverse is yet nonetheless still a universe, or how and where is it separate, then we can understand the source of all things, Creator God, is what we are of and essentially what we are, even if and as expressed individually. All the great philosophers and religious mystics and etc., etc., anyone who did their own authentic findings found out this to be the very case and was speaking of it. Even if and where religions got watered down and mixed up later on, the fact of the matter is, we are of the I am self source, always and forever and eternally. Now, when the great creator does an exhalation, and there are multiple exhalations going on at any given time, and multiple inhalations going on at any given time, through space and time, when we are out on a journey, the beginning is not in a mode of absolute perfection, but rather in a mode 
of tabula rasa or the clean slate with amnesia in order to experience and then remember, relearn, recognize all that we already knew and are. You are never separate from the source. You are never separate from soul, even if the mind with a bit of cloudy vision may come to think so from time to time or with false teachings. The fact of the matter is, with proper internal searchings, anyone may be able to easily find that this is the case. So even I will say right now, do not even take my word for it, but understand for yourself what you are. Know thyself. You and I already know, as far as the body was concerned, that we were born and that we will die. But this is but a brief moment in our journey. Coming out from the, well, it will be pictured for simplicity's sake as a circular sun. And for our, the purposes of our presentation, this will suit us just fine, this picture. Coming out from the creator source center sun, there is a spiraling out. And had we as individual individuated soul entities had the fullness of our memory and knowledge upon an exhalation or an expansion, it would have been extremely overwhelming it would be causing us a great schizophrenia it would be causing us a sort of a scatterbrain effect and the identity of being all things is absolutely overwhelming at the first offset so rather what is done when a soul spark entity leaves the source it takes on very simple forms of learning on which it may undergo to take on the next step and then the next step, and then the next step. Starting from complete amnesia, we enter into as soul life entities, life itself, as soul spark life entities, and then take on our various forms, and each form is appropriate to the learning lesson that is needed for the individual soul spark entity. Know this. After very simple life forms, the soul entity life, the life that you and I are and are of and are always one with, undergo slightly more complicated forms. So for this picture, we are looking at insects, animals of different kinds, birds, etc. Pertaining to the circumstance and the condition in which the soul entity finds itself, it undergoes the life lessons necessary. So as you can see from the various creations here, as conditioned modes of learning and expression, there are different harmonies and different balances learned and unlearned. What I should rather reword that as is the soul entity learns of simple self-survival and it also begins to learn what it is to work in unison with other individuated soul entities, such as animals being in a pack or a flock of birds, a colony of insects. This will seem outlandish to some people when they've been very much attached to the idea that they are a human body and that's it, but we know that this is not the case. When we unlearn the fact that we are not the conditioned state itself, but that which is experiencing the conditioned state, thus being aloof, in a way of speaking, from the conditioned state and more in a state of observation, the life that is experiencing, the life that is looking through your eyes and listening right now, this is the, grand, the first prime experiencer. Life is enjoying itself in a variety of ways. So when we have this proper cleansing of perception, then we see that all this is quite accurately true, purposeful, beautiful, and just. So going through simple lifetimes and taking on more and more complex lifetimes, going through the process of reincarnations, which is simply a matter of changing the density of form. To go from a form 
and then to take on another form leads in a culmination and not in a nothingness. Soul evolution is very true, not evolution towards the purpose of nothingness, but towards the purpose of something. Driven by intelligence and driven by soulful, purposeful meaning, we do evolve as soul entities, trying to remember and trying to enjoy ourself, and we are of the source. Enter the human stage. After the soul has expressed itself and has enjoyed and has learned of various forms, it takes on the more complex variety of format of being. And this, enter the human. All cultures, nations, race, etc. When you look at the beginning, all had lived in hunter-gatherer societies and in tribal formats, to put it simply. For this picture, I simply took it because I liked it, and what is presented here is a tribe working together in unison. Now with more complex ideas and understandings, now with self-consciousness, being self-consciously aware of self, the soul undergoing the human experience is learning various life lessons, is learning of right from wrong, is learning of karma, is learning of source, and is learning of past in that sense, and is learning of future as well. The soul entity, when conditioned in a lesser form, although being very close to source without needing to question it, but when entering the next phase of development, which is intellectual reasoning, and the ability to look, listen, and understand, and begin to understand, we are able to accomplish much. Looking at the scene, we understand that the process goes even within a given lifetime. The youth stage, from like from infancy, then to being children, then to being young adult, adult, older adult, and finally the elderly. The soul development process itself is well understood even within the human form condition because for the simple fact that we see within one human lifetime, we granted ages allowed and the, and the allotted time, we understand the various phase thereof, the various changes that the soul is undergoing. From being a youth with s different levels of naivety or ignorance and innocence and then undergoing the why and the wherefore more and more. And one human life is certainly not enough to accomplish the great understanding of God's source and isness. So undergoing many lifetimes and with many different experiences and varieties, we learn our life lessons, we experience being with things, and after we are more or less finished with certain desires and agendas, we begin to rise above. Granted, the purposes and the times and the frames in which we find ourselves in, societies, human beings banded together, soul entities grouped together, even as we are now, begin to create more civilized, and sometimes perhaps not, dwellings and systems in which they may live and operate. So even as some may prefer the more nomadic lifestyle, and there's absolutely, of course, nothing wrong with that. Yet, at the same time, there is a very mysterious and purpose, a strong purpose behind what we call civilization. If and where it would be run well, of course, there would be indeed fairness for all. But as we experience different levels of civilization, we under are undergoing the processes of furthering our knowledge into purpose, into the variety of functions which make up the whole and the totality. 
So even similar as, as the picture just before, here we understand there is a need for a labor to be performed, like you need dock workers, you need builders, you need those who are doing fishing and farming, etc., etc., the different functions. There are those who are in charge of law, those who want to be able to assist and settle disputes, for example. In all varieties and in all manner of forms and types of conditions, there are, of course, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as it were. So you could say the different soul experiencing the different type of life, the different type of function that it is performing, chasing its desires, undergoing its lessons and its karmas, we see that all is for a bigger purpose than just the mere individual. When we take away small self and begin to look at big self, the bigger picture and the unity of all people, then the small self, which is obsessed with competition and ego and gratifications of many kinds, and a me versus you mentality, well, even in early times it was easier for some persons, and perhaps many persons, to understand the blessing and the beauty of working in unison for a greater good. After undergoing many lifestyles, times, eras, cultures, etc., now on Earth we see people are grouped together more than ever before in a given place, in a given area on Earth, a position, condition, demographic, etc. So let's look at this picture of New York, for example. And as many people very easily and readily know, this is a busy, very, very, very busy cosmopolitan area with all manner of types of persons from various backgrounds. In this type of setting where people are grouped together from various different backgrounds, and whether knowing or not the souls have undergone various lifetimes, it is natural and very easy at this point for us to mingle together and to put aside differences because those differences, which perhaps seemed to have served us or used to serve us insofar as our current mentality was concerned in those times. But now, having gone beyond this, now ever more than ever before, we are understanding unity and a bigger purpose. Ever have we been evolving towards something of a culmination of a climactic moment of a big event. Namely, this is ascension from this type of planetary existence. But it takes, it takes the time it takes for each individual that is involved, of course. So going through the stages of learning and now being commingled and mixed together, human beings are at long last, more than ever before, getting past the idea and notion of my race and your race, my culture and your culture, we whites do this, we blacks do that, so on and so forth. This is less and less important and less and less real. The 3D reality is the least real of all if we really truly think about it on a soul level we are the same absolutely and perfectly when the mind is not wishing to prove otherwise then it sees this by a natural default so moving along we understand we are meant for so much more than that which we are currently living in and we are meant for a bigger picture than merely just life existence on one planet alone. When we see a picture such as this, we immediately tend to associate white, black, Asian, etc. and different ages and male and female. But these differences are in a good sense just an illusion. Even as the clothes on the people that you see here do not create the identity of the person per se, but are perhaps just a small soul expression given the day that they're wearing it, it is similar with the body that the soul is inhabiting. So take any two people here or do, or do the math how you like, but switch the life thereof from one person and put it in another. And we would see the personality would only change 
due to the soul experiencing. So there would be a slight change due to the soul experiencing. But the soul is the same. And having gone through our very many expressions of self and learning lessons, we come to understand the sheer perfect unity. So thinking back in the past, tribe versus tribe and language barriers and all sorts of things, and all these were for their purpose. They needed to be in those settings because for the soul lessons that needed to take place in those times, that was a necessary enactment. But now as many of us, and so very many of us, have gone beyond the simpler life conditionings, now a bigger picture is ever more coming true. On this earth, we see indeed color, race, background, while being a variety of spices of life are not something to divide us. We are united in the common themes. We see that love, joy, fear, hate, sadness, etc. are common to all. Why do we need to be reminded of this in the present age? Well, maybe some people have not yet got over that fact, that we are indeed the same. The same life essence that animates each and all is one. Furthermore, on a soul-based level, taking away color, shape, form, age, etc. Here for this picture, I've simply done a purpose of looking at, in a clearer way, the soul spark entity as not being conditioned in a state of color, shape, form. So allow the picture as you will. What is entailed here is just what I was saying earlier. To actually base a difference on mere appearances or styles. As a human race, the race is one. More than ever before, now that we are getting closer to our development of self-realization and self-actualization, the former did not matter. Now we are understanding more than and better than ever before our very soul nature, and thus also our potential. Allow this diagram as you will. It is said that different functions of the brain are associated with different enactments that the person is doing. So examine as you will. Nonetheless, we like to look at the bottom part with a small little sentence. The specific areas of the cortex carry out specific brain functions, but no areas have been identified as the exact sites of consciousness or learning. Within matter itself, with only and merely a physical means, life itself will not be detected in the mode in which it cannot be detected. By trying to look for God, or look for soul self, or look for purposes with merely matter, like we cannot find and say, love is detected in the body and here it is. We can say that when the soul, when the life, when the person is experiencing love, then there is a glow about them. There is a higher vibration about them. The body is in joy. The body is in peace. The body is feeling positive effect. So the soul's condition affects the body that the soul is housed within. Simply as that. It is not the other way around. It has been said that the human being is only using such and such a percentage of the brain as far as what is detected by so-called modern science. Well, what if there are functions and what if there are actions and such taking place that are not detectable by our current means but they are still very valid? And what if our examination of a brain function, for example, in certain areas seeming to light up at certain moments during certain functions only go to show that the totality of being is far greater than the current mode that is seeming to be highlighted. The very fact that we understand tomorrow and the very fact that we understand past, the very fact that we have the idea of soul evolution, even if someone just says evolution in general, 
they understand that there is more than what is currently had. This is not for no reason, but this is because it is true. And by default nature, our soul understands itself and where it is going. Even when ego mind, and certainly when ego mind is associating itself with I am that thing, it will certainly get misidentity and confusion. And yet, all extremes and steps and cautions were needed to, to perhaps balance out the other far extremes. Within these bodies, we are undergoing the extremities of all and looking at dualities. As soul and not as body, the body itself does not perceive itself. As a soul life entity, we understand our potentials. And then we can't help but wonder, are our potentials to be further enacted with this type of body form or with a higher form that we are next to obtain? Even within any organism of the body, if you want to take a separate look at here's the brain, here's the heart, we see, and pardon the picture for any writing thereof that was not necessarily to be intended, a little uh, within the picture itself it says a few uh, numbers letters disregard that for a moment although I can even encapsulate that into my presentation but looking at any so-called individual function of the body itself we see that it is a very and highly complex interconnected embodiment organism that functions for the whole For someone to say, I am this body, it is just as foolish to say, I am just this brain or I am just this something. We are looking at a combination of things that make the grand totality. Mind itself able to perceive itself not even as body, but as something more and as being prior and as having a future. This is enough proof to understand that there is not a limitation and a final conditioning within the form that we possess. The identity is already something bigger because we are already asking ever and onwards for something more, for a greater understanding, a greater ability, greater capability. We can understand that as we are codependent if we're looking at this planet and understanding a dependency, the body itself is dependent on the oxygen to live. Human beings function grouped together when there are a variety of functions assisting the whole. Then the next stages become more and more clear. On a soulful and on a scientific level, we understand that the greater things that are ahead of us will be in ever yet more complex ways. But of course, in a matured state and in a relaxed state, in the full, or let us at least say in a better mode of self-identity and appreciation for the bigger picture, the totality, seeing neighbor as self, then we are able to more and more appreciate what type of futures and forms we will have when in those modalities, as having been soul, as having been souls going through the evolution process of life remembering and relearning itself. I'm not wishing to complicate this by pointedly going over these different chakra systems, but rather for the simple fact that even as it is said that the brain itself can be detected as to where a current function is occurring, and this is again only to small degrees because we understand very little with our lips current sciences we understand very little of the totality of the makeup even the brain itself but going beyond that looking at the various energy functions and let us call them stations that take place towards the form we see that it is quite clear with just a small examination that each energy center has a life thereof that is indeed dependent on the other parts, whether or not we are aware of all the parts or not. And it is towards progress and not towards regress.
when we have had some experience with life outside a body for example going out of your body and in an astral form or even just having your mind for example if someone lies down or sits down right now and closes their eyes and keeps their arms still putting your arms down at your side now with your mind and not with moving your body move your mental body to use this term and move your arms not your actual physical arms move your mind to move your astral arms up and reach them over your head and now put them back down while some people may not have experienced anything the point being was we already exist apart from the body and it is not conditioned to a state where it functions only in for example if we did not have mind and soul apart we would not have been able to even conceive of that idea whether anything was accomplished or not looking at the various energy centers and how this is in accordance is simply that we are more and more than ever before becoming aware of that which already is whether or not we believed it or not whether or not we wished, wished to suppress it whether or not we wish to engage it whether or not we even exaggerated it in, in parts and places all these possibilities and all these things that have been done the fact is more than ever before are we becoming aware of what was there for example in earlier times and with more primitive medicines it was not understood the exact functionings people did not necessarily do complex operations lobotomies and these sorts of things and have the means in which to analyze it now we have these machines electronics that can detect oh here the brain is undergoing that process here the heart is going into that so more than even without being aware in previous times in our history that these things were, were quite so now we are and it is not stopping now it is ongoing and towards an even higher purpose as human beings we often like to make the mistake of I am the standard what I know is all there is to know and I'll doubt something before I see it but given these examples and looking at history and looking at what is, has been before us we understand that as humans we did not necessarily know something fully even though it already was true and already was the case how not and why not is it not absolutely default that that is the case towards our future and we are still undergoing a soul evolution process Here's a cute little picture of what I believe to be a boy, perhaps an adolescent boy, doing levitation. Now, the actual picture, I'm sure, for this is 99% and more likely that the child has just jumped up or dropped from the air and is doing that. And it's a suspended picture click. The point being, though, because I cannot necessarily find a very real picture of uh, levitation so easily is that there are some people who are in reality able to do this when the authority when the soul when the life entity is giving its authority to the body and saying you have authority over me and matter has authority over mind then the soul in that conditioned state and it is only a conditioned and temporary state is not able to understand that with real self-realization and proper identity and the understanding of indeed mind over matter and soul over mind even that these things are even possible why the human being has not been able to do this on mass or in a very big way whatsoever is a simple fact that very many of us are not at the stage in which we could handle this responsibly at first these sorts of things need to be looked at as ideas and then the idea is wrestled with before it can become a reality in some cases and for the overall purpose of soul evol evolution as a people on earth this has been our case fact of the matter is we are coming into an area in which these things will seem less fiction and less fantastical and more of a reality those who applied themselves to it let's just say for example because levitation for example is actually true not 
some guy sitting on a hidden bar or using a pretend cane or this and that, not suspension wires and this and that. I'm talking actual levitation. While this can be experienced, and it has been, and I have a, a personal friend of mine who has experienced this, while it is experienced, it is to know that the third density, lower vibration, 3D reality, is not as powerful as people had thought. And it was only, indeed, a temporary function in which to inhabit. So, our idea of even this being a possibility lends into the fact that if it is true, and if we can do it, what does it take for us in order to attain that level? That is a question that we can ask ourselves. I'm not sure exactly where this picture is from, but here I just wanted to use something to under understand or to depict the essence of chi. When we hear Tai Chi and the essence of Chi, a life force that is not limited to the matter, but limited to the life force that is enabled to enact both conditions within itself and in the surroundings. We can also certainly link this with telekinetic powers, for example. I also have a personal friend or two that would swear up and down and have no reason to lie to me or to anyone else for that matter, that they have moved objects with their mind. There are stories of this. When, and everybody has a general idea of the idea itself, when we are not in a limited function and not within a self-imprisonment, as it were, of mind and soul. For example, if we say, I'm just that and I cannot do that because that is impossible. When we are in that, in that mind condition and it is just a condition not reality full authority is not in the answer no when we're able to see ourselves as something that which is more and greater than the form which we are taking then such things are possible there are those able to manipulate matter all over the world from ancient times and stories leading up to the very present day and indeed if then how much more so into tomorrow. It is not to be allured by the power of it. Oh, look what I can do. I can do this. I can do that. But it's the idea of being able to properly be mature with the notion of it. And it's like saying in a sort of an almost like a mathematical equation. When we are over the idea of that's impossible and then, oh, wow, I can do that. Now I can manipulate it and abuse it. When this comes more settled within us, then this sort of thing becomes much more easily available. The people who are able to do these sort of, let's call them little powers if we will, the people who are able to do these things are those who have disciplined themselves over time. And even if somebody seemed born with certain abilities, that just proves all the more that it is in the soul and was taken from soul in its higher state, brought back into a new body, and it was a familiar thing in which the soul had prior known and been able to do. This is not to speak of our abilities in astral forms and in and, and higher selves, which have indeed less limitations. But even for the body, we understand the provings of that which we are when we are able to overcome the notion, I am just this. There are Tai Chi masters and Chi masters to the very day this very day who are able to do some impressive things even if they just seem like minor powers and little tricks and I don't mean tricks as in illusions and, and lying, cheating, stealing but little things if these are the case if this is such and, I, and it being as such if this is the case now how much more is the potential from where we are going Telepathy. It is argued quite well, and I had come up with this idea on my very own, and was delighted sometime, some years later, to see that others had understood this as well. And then that is very excellent, because if it is a common thing, then perhaps it has more validity in being a very real thing. It has been said, 
telepathy has occurred and people have experienced it for some time and I myself have experienced that myself when we are even looking at such devices and gadgets as cell phones all right you have one person talking to another person over a distance even a so-called time zone I could speak to somebody in China or Japan and what would the time zone matter here we are on a telephone talking in live time for example right now all of you have been on the telephone before even as all of you who are watching this have used a computer before now the soul in a conditioned state needs to undergo first the idea of something being true and then experiencing it in a certain type of way in order to understand the soul potential and have it as an actual default so while we have eyes ears mouth nose when every other function the five senses the sixth sense and beyond we understand that over a period of time we have undergone we have undergone a learning curve and a process so with uh, cell phones for example while at first we needed to have a gadget to do it as the soul now has experienced the fact that I can talk to someone who's not even in the room and is way over there and the voice is heard in my head and my voice is heard in that person's head and even more even think of video telecon conferences or whatever the case even think of watching a YouTube presentation and hear someone's words are in your mind this is all ty also a type of telepathy and also proving a type of time travel or folding of time because you could be watching this video anytime from the date in which I made it so looking at all these all these powers and natural endowments we already have and experiencing them through external things sometimes first because while they are already eternal and are already available some people just needed to see it externally and we are all going th into this process so with cell phones for example or telephone in general for example we see that here we are using a gadget and now the idea of talking to someone over a space and a distance and even a time is an actual thing is an actuality is a reality this is to give us training for the next stage in the soul development which will be and perhaps maybe not necessarily with these bodies although already experienced with these very bodies that this is our future and our reality to come study that for a second the fact that you put on music or you talk to someone on the phone or you watch a video you are hearing somebody's voice in your mind even as it already already ever was even without a gadget when you talk to someone you are hearing their voice in your mind and vice versa so how therefore is it not to be indeed possible and it has already been experienced to have telepathy as an actuality first we see the idea of something and then we experience it externally even with gadgets and then in a more refined way and all this is coming the power of healing hands healing and miracles have been going on since the very beginning of time and there is no beginning of time <laughs> of course what I mean by this is as long as people have been on this planet there have been miraculous healings when we give the authority over to 3d palpable matter which is the less real of all realities being the most temporary in comparison to the others of all realities let's think about that 3d reality is the most changeable mutable it is the most in flux 3d reality can always exist somewhere in the cosmos here there or elsewhere but the fact is it is the most subject to change being the case when we are taking our authorities away or placing our authority in our final judgment or giving up our our vision to just 3d reality we understand the soul's potential all the more and understand that these things that for some people still seem perhaps to the day strange fictional stories well 
that is purely from the conditioned state of I am that thing. When the person, and as it has been experienced from the past all the way till now and beyond, when the person understands the healing ability itself, health itself, when a wound heals, whether it did so of a natural way by just resting or whether it was in a way that was sped up by some additional external tools, the fact is a wound, for instance, and for example, can indeed be healed and sped up with the thought of it and with the enactment. The intention to say, my hand can heal this and speed up the healing process, and believing in it does indeed do just that. And that is just an example of one person using healing hands to do it. There are simple things as even saying the mind and the soul power says I am healed and then it is instant and not even taking a period of time but an instantaneous enactment. When we can understand and not say no but say yes rather that first being an idea then being an actuality even as the examples and experience of this have gone from the past to the now then we realize what we have thought was the limitations of the body was only our thoughts that had limited us being in a conditioned state and a type of form in the human body the idea of there being like we said earlier, a before and a future, already should show to a lot of people that as we have progressed up until now, why are we to deny what is our future if it is already there? If I'm putting it in that manner, but let's examine just that very fact. Because all time exists absolutely, and according to source God isness, in a now. An idea of something may exist eternally, whereas a manifestation of something may just be temporary. So let's put it this way. There was not a chair, and then someone made a chair, and then the chair was broken apart, burned in a fire, or dis dis uh, dismembered, dismantled, and stopped being a chair. But the idea of chair is still there. Our idea of healing hands and miracles and the fact that this has been experienced from the past up to the now, how much more then in the future will this be an everyday thing and a reality for us? It is of a default nature. Enter the next stage. For some people, while seemingly still to be a controversy, nonetheless, our understanding of the next step in soul evolution is existence and experience apart from one singular planet or planetary existence. Throughout all the ancient tales, and I want to make a clarification on something. The word myth, when people say myth, we think, oh, it's a fiction, it's a made up thing. The word myth actually originally meant word or the speech. So the speech, or here's the word, I heard the word, the passed down oral tradition. The myth just means the word of the past. When we realize that the so-called myths, which were simply the stories and histories, however colorful they seemed and however fantastical and fictional they seemed at some times, when we look at the root source of all the stories of humankind, of humankind, spanning the globe, we see that the story is essentially the same thing. We were set into motion as soul spark entities from those who assisted us along. Now of a natural default, we were to evolve as souls since we are also one with the creator, one with the source. But those of a high, at a higher stage were able to assist us along the way additionally and welcome us additionally into the next stage in which we would cooperate. So even you take on uh, the earth, for example, and you look at the fact of human peoples meeting each other for the first time and the sharing of ideas and the sharing of this and that. Well, now 
the earth has gone to a stage where we understand the geography and the meeting of people and the inter and commingling of people well now let us examine the next stages of entities beings who are of a stage and of a time and of a place welcoming us into their world do we think it was just in a small selfish sort of ego based way that we were the only thing in the universe and leaving the earth with our little ships would be the first time anyone has done it <laughs> absolutely not and they have been able to slowly suggest this without the idea of it yes through fictional movies and through stories and through the idea but actual sightings and actual events have been taking place since the beginning of this place up until now and now with the idea getting more and more comfortable as long as people are taking away certain aspects there's a lot of fear mongering going on and this is again the fear mongering due to the fear of the unknown and the misidentification of the self so in regards to our joining the galactic stage to put it this way as an externally expressed experience while that intimidates some well, so does the idea of telepathy, so did the idea of levitation, so did the idea of many things until they are proven. If you went back a thousand years and showed someone a television, they'd think you're some kind of crazy black magician or who knows what, or indeed a god, right? But after a period of time and after the experience of something, well, so-called fiction, so-called myth is less and less just that, but more and more a reality of what already was. And again, myth means the word, not a falsity. We're not talking about lies, we're talking about a handed down oral tradition. And in many cases, written tradition. Now everybody's probably familiar with this picture from the movie E.T. Well, here you have the little E.T. dude touching the finger of Elliot, the character Elliot. And there you see the purple soul spark, the oneness one life touching one life there is unity of all things so now with our abilities now that we as human beings as souls within these human beings have undergone the experience and conditioning of the human life style an example the expression of soul life now the idea of the space stage has been introduced and over decades in a period of time more and more is becoming a reality and more and more we understand that there are those who are there first and who are welcoming us. Simply put, those entities that are there have been out from the source and exhaled before and are, have been out longer than those of us perhaps who are here now. Mind you, there are many stories and many realities of incarnations of souls from higher levels coming down to help out. So look at this as we will no need to name names of certain persons nonetheless let's look at this for example those who will believe it will and those who will not and wish to deny it that's their choice what i'm suggesting though by all this is what if the next stage indeed of the soul entity is to take on a new body which is very much adept at telepathy telekinesis healing and the ability to travel space and the ability of many things interdimensional existence we can remind ourselves again that that which already was and is there is there not dependent upon the human belief thereof when we are getting past our ego self when we're getting past the, the negativity and this the self-conditioning saying because I'm not that therefore nobody else when we are done this nonsense, this nonsensical self-assessment, and fair enough, it is a certain stage in which a certain individual, individuated soul entity is at. But when we have gone past this security frame network of identity, we enter the bigger identities and realities. And so, having gone from what we were previously up until even the current present moment in Earth's history, when we think of future and what is beyond, all these things haven't been introduced, having been introduced already. We may surely understand many of the ideas and thoughts we have had, even while experienced little bits and pieces here and there, 
are certainly going to be our very reality. For those who are responsibly able, all of this is already experienced and hinted at. And on a global scale, the introductions and the ideas being more and more immersed, being more and more swallowed more and more easily, being ingested in the soul as very much possible realities, is more slowly moving, and now even quicker, I should rather say, quickly moving into the very future that we might have even imagined and thought, because it is there. Proper self-identity is the most important thing to have, to stop giving up power and identification with things. There is being and there is thing, and that is all that there is in the isness. When we realize we are an expression of being, the being, being itself, life. Life is life, and life is not foreign to itself, but life is one to itself. Even with conflicts and disagreements, life is one to itself. Even when we have an argument in our family and we seem to be fighting with a family member or a friend or someone in the schoolyard or someone at work or out in whatever, all the varying opinions that we have and the differing ideas, nonetheless, the life is one thereof and familiar to itself. We have been experiencing on this planet all the extremes of all sorts of ideas and opinions, levels and modes of being and the interaction with things we are truly able to look at this reality and that that is very much the case then we can see the soul development process as in recovering and remembering itself as in being more aware it is as if a dim light was on but then with application and even more fast or, or more quickly when someone applies themselves does the light turn on faster and faster and more and more clarity is had by the individual soul expression the soul self that you are is one of life essence with my own. We are one. Even when we argue, even when we get along, all in between, we are one. Life itself cannot talk to itself unless it is this of the same variety. What I mean by that, or to reword it, is that we would not even be able to have any conversation at all any sight, any hearing, any any anything, if we are not contained, to use a poor word, in oneness. Our potential is quite grand, those who are developed. It is a matter of a mental development, it is a matter of emotional balancing. An emotional development is a matter of emotional balancing, and a mind that is less scattered and less fearful, based on a fearful heart more balanced with wisdom and understanding when the emotions are resting on the balance of love and appreciation for what is and the mind then thereafter rests and becomes still copes with connected with heart copes with what is is not scared or frightened or aggressive or trying to manipulate in a childish manner of what is all these things become very easy to grasp cooperate with and ever more for us to go on but it is in stages there is no such thing as just living one life and that's it people do not go from a conditioned insecure being and then heaven or hell eternal in a very simple logical sense we understand the need and the necessity and the default nature of taking things in steps and stages becoming more aware and becoming more actualized as beings experiencing all these things towards our great enlightenment, our great culmination. I am, to say I am, is a great victory and to know that. The multiverse is a universe. When we are examining a picture such as this, when we see planets and stars and systems, we understand a bigger picture. More than ever before are we as humans understanding a big picture. Life is life. There is a now 
there is and is positive and negative exist love and joy fear and hate exist they are potentially available potentially all these things are there we experience it we are the being experiencing all manner and modes of being having an operation and interaction with things to come to realize this even when things are over obvious and i would even dare say that over obvious and right in our face we still like to deny in a sense that we are still wrestling with a notion of something an idea of something finding a security in something well this type of uh, thought and this type of lifestyle works for me at the moment well that is very good we are at where we are at nonetheless when we can see the common ties of all things every single human being on this planet can feel love can feel fear so can an animal so can an insect perhaps even we could even dare say even a tree and plant life forms the fact of the matter is there is a unity there the underlying themes that unite all things are within being and not within the thing the self misidentification of the thing but rather the underlying thing of all which is the being even as a human and a dog can inject together enjoy a moment can love each other and have a romp through the field and enjoy life and have some blissful moments this is because it is common it's not based on a particular form it is a common thing it is a theme of existence joy is one such eternal theme in existence for the soul entity individuated and yet one to enjoy and to express we are of the all if we want to use the word God it doesn't really matter it's just it's a name in a certain language but whether we use the term God or creator or source self or whatnot whether we believe in what we will or not whether we are changing our ideas and belief systems the fact is when we look at what already is there this is our reminder that we are one with it we see all these planets and systems and we can understand that we are meant for it now that we are looking at the idea of gigantic galaxies and a massive cosmos and all sorts of things is because we are one with it and we are meant for it were we not meant to look at it and explore it and enjoy it and have some kind of interaction with it we wouldn't even have the idea that it was there so even as someone can understand that there has been a past up until now we also can understand that there is a future ahead of us not dependent on our idea of it or not not dependent on our body being here or not there is past there is future but all is somehow existing in a great is in a great now this is the God, the Creator, the Source, and all that it is of. All that is made up of it. All the varying components that make up this great totality of isness. The all, the all in all, the all of all. All in all and all in one. Individuated and expressed in a variety of ways. Even the negative is there to show the good. Even the negative was there so that the soul could leave in order to return and have knowing and have wisdom and have the balance and emotions when we are examining our soul potentials the human potential already itself is very great so who's to say at the next stage our potentials well let's just say sky's the limit as we can handle them we are ready to take them on as we can handle them we are ready for them to become our reality and perhaps not necessarily before it all depends the in, uh, it depends on the individual entity having its own life expression what stage it is at what it, it is what ha it has been accustomed to what idea of future it possesses nonetheless soul expression being of one life not foreign to itself connected by one we are in this universe 
a great being expanded and expressed into a multitude doing this dance forever this is the eternity dance it is a very beautiful thing the microcosm shows the macrocosm we live in a conditioned state to cope with new ideas and forms and enactments and experiences but this is in preparation for what is next not to the purpose of nothingness for those who understand they already certainly do and for those wrestling with the idea well maybe you just need to think a bit more about it maybe you need to disassociate a little bit with what one thinks they are but perhaps maybe <laughs> I'm not to use the word perhaps but I'm being polite perhaps what they really are not We all are a very great of the very great being we are great amazing beings and the more we say yes and realize this and come into harmony with this and balance our emotions when our minds possess understanding based from an emotional center based on a wisdom of understandings appreciation of things we come to understand by a natural default that I am not I am this and I am that I am and I am experiencing this at this moment. Where have I been and where am I going? I am a child of the universe. I am one with it. When this is understood, we have really come into great self-identity and self-realization, self-awareness. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. There are certainly more to come. and I have other videos if someone may wish to look at them. I wish you the very best in your own self-realization and awareness and for your joy. To find that long looked for self-approval and that fairness we all crave and the realization that we are not different and meant for to stay fighting and divided but meant for much bigger things than this. How much indeed grander is our future to be? If we are invited to the next stage, and it is a space stage in exploration with fantastic beings and fantastic worlds, people talk about the, the, the fantastic planet, well this is a fantastic universe. The sky is the limit, and even as we feel we are drawn towards something, even where we want to go, we will go each one understand that on an individual level on an individual level we all go where we want to go we'll end up where the heart desired this is a beautiful reality and let us embrace it let's realize our oneness with it that is giving us perfect clarity take care for now